What has life been like in China these past years and months? It's been a while. The last time I was in England was January 2020. I came back just as the coronavirus period was starting here. Just before the lockdown in Wuhan started. Yeah. A lot's happened since then, yeah, a lot's happened. So let's talk about it. So I'd say, to summarize, in the beginning coronavirus periods, there were worse places to be in the world than China. Reason being is that in China, we suffered the least of the COVID restrictions overall, especially compared to the West. Let's take, for example, the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom had multiple rolling lockdowns for weeks and months on end, and they would come back, causing huge disruptions to business and normal life. In China, that was less the case. We did have some lockdowns, but they were relatively short. Even recently, even during the time when Shanghai was locked down, uh, the, where I've been, it's been for a few weeks at most. But since then, things have changed. Now, as the rest of the world becomes relatively more open, China becomes relatively more restricted. There are more restrictions on travel and daily life. Right now, at the moment in Yangzhou, where I live now, we have to do coronavirus tests every two days. And we are subject to multiple checks everywhere we go. For example, yesterday I went to the electronics store and they needed to check three things. They needed to check my health QR codes, my, uh, the status of my coronavirus test, and also my travel codes, like where I've been. So you'd think if these things were any good, you don't need, you don't, you don't need to check one of them, right? But no, you need to check all three of them. They incidentally did not check my vaccination status, which is interesting. I'll leave it like that. And also it means that um, traveling is almost out of the question. Traveling within China, I mean, because um, there's always that risk. There's the risk of going to a place and then being subject to a lockdown. Or if not that, uh, you, you suddenly find that the area you're in has become orange, meaning uh, a mid-risk, a medium-risk area. So that means when you come back to where you've come from, you'd have to do quarantine in a hotel, which means missing work. So even if traveling is not outright banned or restricted, what might end up happening is that you choose not to travel anyway, because it's, the risk is too big. And of course, I've not been able to go back to my home country in these years. Part of that's because uh, the flight tickets have been prohibitively expensive. There's been very few flights. I suppose I could do it, I could do it. However, coming back would be a problem because coming back, I would have had to do quarantine and I don't have the time to take off to do quarantine. And I'm one of the lucky ones. I was not in Shanghai, the months on end Reductor ad absurdum lockdown, super lockdown, real lockdown, where you can't even leave your own home and uh, food is delivered to you by the government. Fantastic, what a way to live. A question some people have asked me is, have I experienced any discrimination as a foreigner here, especially around the coronavirus period? And I'd say, oh yes, but it's been very, um, very little actually. It's been a couple of minor incidences that I can recall. Uh, first of all, I, I tried to get in a bar once and they straight up said, no, we're not letting you in because you're a foreigner. To which I said, okay, well, I just don't come back ever then. That's fine. Um, another thing was I was getting, I was leaving an airport to get on the airport uh, shuttle bus and there was a middle-aged woman ranting and raving and I found out afterwards that she didn't want to get on the mini bus because I was on there. <laughs> but um, she was then told, well, you get on the bus or you stay here. So that was the end of that. Apart from that, I don't experience the same things that I've seen many people on the internet claim to experience. 
like daily discrimination and people um, picking on them and stuff like that. Me, me, not really. So to summarize, I'd say at the beginning, yes, China was a good place to be over the coronavirus period. Since then, not so. And there's been many foreigners who've now decided to leave China because of these um, apparently endless restrictions. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't blame them. Um, I wouldn't begrudge them to do that at all. Um, although I've decided not to do that because I think the benefits of staying in China probably outweigh the costs at this moment in time. We'll see what, how, how it is in the future, but I was here and there and I don't blame anybody at all for deciding to go. And on top of that, it's been a huge disruption to business, which means life as a foreigner has become more difficult. Because our lives in China are uh, reliant on business and the businesses that we work for doing well. If these coronavirus restrictions make it more difficult to do business, it makes it more difficult for foreigners to get paid. And on top of that, what, and what timing this is, the government decided to institute these double reduction policies, which putatively are for helping parents reduce um, the educational costs. So the people who really lose out on this are the training centres, which make up a large bulk of the foreign job population here in China. Um, so that hasn't helped at all. That hasn't helped at all. Now, that said, I think that just about covers all of the negative things about China at the moment. But let's talk about some of the positive things because there are positive things still. Now, at the end of the day, China is still a country with a rich culture, long history, great food, people who are very accommodating, and foreigners have a very good lifestyle here. We get paid very well. The cost of living is not so great compared to many countries in the West. I would say we probably do have privilege, even with everything that I've just talked about. That said, it's becoming less and less of an attractive proposition. Does it mean, does it mean I'm going to leave China right now? No, but we'll see. That, but that's okay. China will always have a special place in my heart, no matter if I leave tomorrow or in 10 years. But there we go. I thought it might be interesting uh, for many of you to see how things have been going in China lately. And um, if you have any more questions, please let me know. And uh, please don't forget to like the video and check out some of the other videos that I've done about life in China. So cheers guys, see you later, bye bye.